All right. So, Dr. Massey, thank you so much for joining us today. It's it's really an honor for me to interview you. So, um, my first question to you is, um, could you elaborate on Western's decision to go back to phase three of the return to campus plan? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as we have always said, uh, the safety of our students and our campus um, and our London community will um, will continue to be the top priority for Western in all of our decisions, especially when we find um, society in the middle of a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. And we are working incredibly hard. There are leaders and staff and faculty right across Western that are working incredibly hard to um, open our campus as much as possible and mm -hmm. balance um, the, uh, the opportunities for, for students and for our community to come together in person, um, right. while also ensuring that we can maintain appropriate physical distancing. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we are monitoring uh, local and, and uh, provincial uh, COVID-19 um, positive test data. And, mm -hmm. you know, when we when we saw those numbers begin to increase, particularly as they pertain to some Western students, it was important for us just to tap the brakes a little bit, to roll back slightly so that we could ensure uh, that we still keep the campus as safe as possible. All right. Um, so just as a follow-up, how would this decision impact the ongoing in-person or blended classes? I lost you there for a second. Let's try again. Okay. Um, I was saying, just as a follow up, how will this decision impact the ongoing in person or blended classes? So, at the moment, our um, on campus or, and blended uh, learning experiences are continuing as planned. We're mm -hmm. working really closely with our colleagues in Middlesex London Health Unit. And um, uh, they are still very comfortable with the plans that we have uh, underway. Um, our campus um, has been um, has been reviewed a number of times, and we're yeah. we're fairly confident um, at this stage that all of the various protocols we have in place um, uh, meet uh, existing standards and, and regulations, and we're able to adhere to all of the social distancing, physical distancing rules uh, within those spaces. So on campus classes. Um, that were scheduled at the beginning of the year. Of course, it's a much smaller amount than we would typically see. Those right. are, are still continuing as planned at this time. Okay, um, so I believe that phase three of the return to campus plan restricts any kind of recreational uh, recreational activities which are happening on campus or any in-person activity, activities which were planned to happen on campus. So other than that, are there any additional steps that Western is taking to prevent the possibility of getting infected on campus? Lots of things. Uh, Western is, has a, a, a multi-phase, uh, multi-tiered strategy for mm -hmm. helping to mitigate the spread of COVID-19 amongst our, our student staff, faculty, and community members. This includes uh, stepping up some of the proactive educational messaging that we have for our students um, with regards to reminding everybody, you know, to, to wash our hands, uh, to wear a mask, to maintain appropriate physical distancing. Uh, we have made the decision to temporarily pause some of our on-campus recreation and sport activities right now. Mm -hmm. um, it, I will point out though that our virtual programming is continuing, uh, both for uh, support for our student athletes and also campus recreation. You can, uh, you know, you can join a, an online fitness class multiple times throughout the day. Our team's doing a remarkable job. Okay, yeah. Um, so another question I want to ask you is that ever since the second wave has started. Um, beginning with 28 students testing positive for COVID-19, there's been this certain, uh, there's been the strange blame game which has started against the students. So your comments on that. I think it's really important that um, as we move through complex societal challenges, in this case, a global pandemic, mm -hmm. that we resist the temptation to blame particular populations of um, you know, uh, our, our young people play a, a valuable role in society, and um, it's certainly true that in the second wave of, of COVID-19, we are seeing higher rates of infection amongst that particular population um, uh, of people. And there's there's reasons for that. There's reasons that we we can understand why that take why that's happening. And I think what's important is that we don't focus on blame, mm -hmm. and instead we take a harm reduction approach to understand that. People in their 20s have an important need to be in community with each other. Right. Um, 
that there is a, there are important developmental steps that occur um, at that age that require and, and, um, and the best achieved when we're in community with each other at that age. Mm -hmm. And so rather than point fingers and blame, I think what we have to do is help our, our students, help our young people um, understand ways in which they can be socially connected while physically distant. Right. And, and I think that um, when we look at some of our student leaders uh, at Western, they are doing a remarkable job of, of, of leading the way, of demonstrating good strategies. And certainly within student experience, uh, we have been harnessing our social media tools like our Instagram account right. to, uh, to really uh, highlight opportunities for students to, to be in community with each other, but do so in a way in which is going to keep everybody as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, a question which has been flooding literally everybody's mind is that suppose a student is found to be flouting the guidelines given by both the campus as well as the health unit and the government and is found to be responsible for a potential outbreak within the campus. So will the university take any disciplinary action against the student or will the university take any steps for that matter if um, the students are found to be flouting the government protocol? So, you know, going back to our, our early conversation here, right, that the health and safety of our campus is always our number one priority. Right. Our goal here through um, our tools, like our code of student conduct, is first of all, to be in it, to highlight that as an educational opportunity. We want to help students understand how to make great choices, how to make mm -hmm. wise choices, keep everybody as safe as possible. Sometimes there is, an, there is a reason, a really good reason why we do have to engage in a little bit of course recorrection uh, with students that, that might make choices that, um, that really do not adhere to the, uh, the, the guidance that's being provided by our colleagues in public health or, mm -hmm. and or Western policies and procedures. So our code of conduct does provide a mechanism for us to engage in that uh, course recorrection with our students and make sure that we get everybody uh, back on the road to, to making great choices moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. And um, I don't think so. I would be getting an exact answer out of this but when can we expect the campus to go back to phase four <laughs> <laughs> well you see if I knew the answer to that I would be you know on every national television show in the country the, 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 the reality is that you know pandemics are, are complex mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately for us there is not a key uh, a, a one key indicator or one key decision that needs to happen. What we're going to see, I think, for the rest of the academic year is a consistent um, reflection and refinement of some of our decisions. Okay. As numbers change uh, across the country, provincially, locally, and then on our campus, we will have to make adjustments. Um, what I will say is that I, I think our students should be very proud of mm -hmm. the work that the university is doing, of the leadership of our student leaders, um, the, the boldness with which our administration has, um, has engaged with ensuring we can provide as many in-person opportunities for our students as possible, while right. also um, managing the health and safety of our campus. Mm -hmm. And that's going to require consistent adjustment throughout the year in order for us to be able to keep those things in balance. So uh, in addition to this being a year of learning how to wear a mask and, and keep our hands as clean as possible, it's also a year where we're going to have to learn patience and the ability mm -hmm. to pivot um, as we as we keep things, uh, you know, moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I already know the answer to this last question I have for you. But any advice for students to prevent the virus to spread? Absolutely, I think it's really important that our students pay close attention uh, to the guidance that um, is being offered by our colleagues in public health. And as a university, we're doing um, the best we can to mm -hmm. uplift those messages and, and share them with our students. So key messages right now, you know, wash your hands, wear a mask, limit <laughs> your contacts to people that you live with. And when you're not, uh, when you're out, um, you know, when you're outside your home, maybe you are, uh, you know, doing some grocery shopping or taking a walk in the park, make sure you keep distant. Um, right. It's also important that we manage our mental health. Um, I'm very mindful of the, the pressure and stress that, that the pandemic is 
um, is creating in, in not only students, but also other community members. So find ways to be socially connected. Uh, we were fortunate to have such great technology now. It's a little easier to manage perhaps than it might have been 50 years ago. Um, so find ways to stay connected with family and friends, people we care deeply about, but it's just work hard together to keep everybody as safe as possible. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Massey, for joining me. I really appreciate taking, uh, I really appreciate you taking out time from your schedule and doing this. This was, this interview was definitely needed for students like me who are in campus a bit nervous about what's going to happen, but definitely have this positive outlook of that uh, soon things will be better if we just stick to the guidelines, if we just so, uh, just be socially distant, wear a mask for maybe just a couple more days, maybe uh, months. If, if any campus can do it, Western can. So I, I have every confidence in the, the ability of our administration, of our faculty, our staff, and our students. And uh, we're going to give it all we've got to, to make this the very best semester we can. So let's continue to work together and uh, try to end the academic year as strong as we can. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Stay in touch.